Gus, if you want to get started on like talking out what you're looking to uh, to to get out of us, that could work. You know, might as well start on that. Sure. So when Project Club sort of like was <laughs> announced and I joined, I had all these grand ideas about like <laughs> I want to present this project or like I want to talk about this, and like I think they're cool. But I feel like I can push myself to do more. I'm just not really sure what more is. <laughs> so like I'm like I'm open to like all sorts of ideas on really whatever. I'm just and I'm not like you have to have like a complete idea for me. Like it's just like if it's like, oh, what about like something that does uses like this or that, then like I I'll think about it, but I also have a bunch of existing projects that I don't really know. I'm like, I like talking about them, but I'm just, I'm not sure they're worthy of a, of a project club meeting. I, um, I guess the first thing I would say is sure they are. Like, that's the point. It's, it's something that you think is cool, um, whether you think, or you think it's interesting or mm -hmm. it is interesting to you and then talk about, you know, what's interesting about it to you or what you've done or um, any of that kind of thing. So don't feel like it has to be some lofty thing. The whole idea is just to talk about a thing that you find interesting um, in R, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, ideally showing some code and you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, that would be my main thing that I would say is if you have like, you shouldn't create something, especially for this club, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the idea is this is a thing that I work on ideally, you know, an open source project I have or yeah. something like that. Here it is, um, you know, a, a nice level would be here are some questions I have or here are mm -hmm. some things I could need, I need help with or that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, do you want to bounce those off of us and see? I mean, sure. Like, I guess, I don't know if I'm allowed to screen share. <laughs> I can certainly try. Um, let me close tabs that are not. Done. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the, there's a few that, I have so many tabs open, I'm not even sure, like, Zoom's showing me about 12 hours <laughs> to share. <laughs> I think it's this one. I hope so. All disappeared. All right, I'm scrolling the screen. Yeah, okay, cool. So there's this one, which isn't super fancy. I just, I was, um, I was working on an advent of code problem and I was like, oh, I need a Caesar shift. And there is a package that did it, but not how I wanted. So I, I wrote a new package and then was like, well, if I'm going to have this one function, I might as well throw in a few other uh, text ciphers. And it's the kind of thing where like everything in there so far is relatively complete, but there's always more text ciphers I could add, um, especially the fancier ones that use a lot more math. And then okay. the other one I was thinking about was this one. Um, which I had to use Stata in one of my econ classes. Um, <laughs> and I really hated it. And my professor was like, why? Stata is great. And so I named the R package after him. It's not published, <laughs> it's private. But, um, and then I, like, over the course of like a week or two, I made this massive function that will cert, it will run every combination of linear or whatever kind of regressions you tell it to and then spit the spit out the results all in a big table and okay. I have some sort of like ranking metric that I use <laughs> and um, I've used that to great success in a few projects where in school they're like find the best whatever for this and so I just throw it at this function and I wait like 10 minutes to four hours 
for however long. And then <laughs> it, it gives me a, a regression and I'm like, okay, this is the best one. And then I don't really have to like do anything. And then invariably when they're like, no, you have to do more. I do like two weeks of work and I go, this is still the best. <laughs> but, um, like one day I would like to like build this out so that it has like tree trimming functions or capabilities and all that sort of thing. Um, I know right now it will yell at you if the variables aren't named exactly the way that it's expecting. And it's like, it's like if you pass it a dependent variable and then all of the column names, it won't just go, oh, that's the dependent variable, I'll get rid of it. It just takes everything and then mm. you have issues. <laughs> um, but those are really the two that I'd like, my two ongoing projects that I'm like, these might turn into something or they might not, but I don't know if you guys, if those are interesting to you, then I can present or. I think both have uh, potential. Um, I think, you know, like Cypher has the story of why it came to be, uh, I mean, I guess so does Dewey, but um, yeah. like, you know, there's the problems you were looking to solve. And then I, I think you, um, I don't know, you, it, I, I vaguely remember you talking about it and that you had learned things. <laughs> yes, I, so. I did learn things. Um, this <laughs> one, Cypher was good because I submitted to CRAN and that's always very exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, I've got the cute little like five functions. <laughs> they work. Um, but then this one is a, like, it pretty much needs a full rewrite. I think if I tried <laughs> running it, I think there were some data table updates that might have broken it. Um, um <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'd have that's... to find out I haven't used it in like six <laughs> months more than but um... I so I would say right now Cypher feels like the one that is ready to talk about more um this this is like the complete here's what I've done project <laughs> and then this one is, is there the, a... I've made a good start it needs a lot of feedback project well, so I guess both of those uh, does does Cipher like is Cipher basically done? Would will you ever? Do you ever plan I, to change anything? Find it. Uh, so, if anything, I would add new Cipher methods to it. But like, unless something happens, I'm not <laughs> really planning on updating any of these five. They're, In that case, because you know, one of the things. That, that this was formed for, I mean, I don't know. The main thing that's formed for is to give people a chance to talk about something just to get used to it, you know, to, to basically yeah. practice. But one of the ideas was um, getting help. And if Cypher is basically done, there's yeah. not a lot of help you can get. Um, but, you know, it is the, something that you can, it, it's something I could imagine you presenting somewhere. And yeah. this would be a chance to kind of practice that. Um, yeah. So I'd say basically either one, pick pick whichever one cool. you feel like talking about. Um, and yeah, I think like uh, we'll keep the schedule as is and move Lydia to the end unless like someone needs to skip or something. And I'll talk to her yeah. about that. Um, if she has something that she wants to practice before, you know, if there's a date that she had in mind, <laughs> I, I don't, then we might like rearrange. I'm not hard set on anything, as you can tell. <laughs> right. <laughs> if she's like, oh, like, I really want to get it done, like, before whatever date, I don't mind, like, popping over to a different one. Um, no problem. Um, yeah, we'll find, I mean, I don't want to bug her right now, basically. Uh, Yes, I will okay. stop sharing. That's cool. Those are the options. I'll continue thinking about them. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to see um, out of the people who are here. 
let's see, Federica's signed up for uh, April. Hello, Femi is yep. not signed up. So, uh, and coffee, I don't believe I've met. Um, Lucio isn't signed up. And Sham, I know that you're busy with a lot of things, so it, I'm not going to pressure you to sign up right now. Um, I'm not really pressuring anybody to sign up, I guess, to be clear. But uh, we, so, you know, if you're here, uh, we do have the sign up sheet attached in the channel. Um, you're encouraged to find something to talk about. You can do it like Kevin's doing for May. Um, this is a project that he and I have had in the background for a while. And then he had to put it aside and it's nowhere near done. And he actually hadn't touched it for a while. So he signed up in order to make himself come back to it. And so we've been talking about it that he's like, yeah, I better actually make this thing work so I can talk about at least the basics of it. Um, so, you know, if you have uh, something that you're kind of just thinking about working on, feel free to sign up and uh, use it as motivation. Um, call that talk driven development. I did that for uh, our studio comp um, this past summer. I had the, um, it was shiny Slack, which I presented back in October here that I had the, um, like the, the mentor dashboard or um, for R4DS. And we had started to work on the book clubber one. And I wanted to just, abstract away the login piece and since I wanted to get that done I signed up to present that <laughs> at our studio uh our studio account and it got chosen for a lightning talk and so I had to actually finish it <laughs> and so it's uh it's a nice motivator um all right well I know the other thing that we had to talk about was Lucio uh had um, asked me about, um, so we have the book club, uh, book club sign up shiny app, uh, is a package on GitHub called book clubber, um, under the R4DS organization. And, uh, he wanted to help me with some of that. And so, um, did you have specific questions, Lucio, assuming you're there? Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions uh, because I was trying to look at the way to fix the, the issue with the selection of, of hidden yeah. time slots. And actually, me... like, like 10 seconds ago, I think I managed to fix the issue. Oh, awesome. Yes, no. So perhaps if I could share the, like the, the solution, because maybe if it is integrated into the, into the actual code, it does work as well. So this is um, here. Let me. I'll go ahead and share my screen real quick. Uh, it's like to show so everyone can uh, follow what we're talking about. All right. So this is the app. Um, the idea is normally you would come here with, you know, like uh, book name is our packages. All right, you know, select our packages automatically, uh, figures out your time zone using JavaScript um, with what you're reporting your time zone is. And then it has this table where you fill out what time slots are you available for. And uh, in December, I updated it so that it blanks out time slots that aren't available. We do. Um, like the book club slot plus the hour before and after so that we don't have uh, overlaps of book clubs. But the problem is if you do like this, for example, oh, you can actually select those time slots. So it looks like they're not there, but they like you can get them to be selected. And then once you do that, they're there forever. Um, that's the one you're talking about, right, Lucio? Yes. Okay, and I did some work like uh, back when I was working on it um, and I could not get that to actually uh, to make it where these are actually gone. 
like not just kind of hidden, but they're actually gone and you can't select them. Um, so uh, evidently Lucio has, uh, has it possibly working? Do you want to show it or do you want to talk about it or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I can show it. <laughs> uh, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so I, I wasn't able to to reproduce locally the, the application. I think because I was lacking a couple of, of secret files. So I've only oh, been yep. playing around in the in the actual web page. So I, I hope like you have the the paid uh, service of Shiny because I think like playing around with the with the site for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh yeah, they they have uh donated us a the standard paid plan so thankfully yes uh we have you haven't probably haven't totally burned up our minutes <laughs> okay so the solution it's only partial but for, for, for example i wasn't able to to eliminate these inputs that are for example getting checked right now but what i was able to do right, right now is that if the user selects one of these inputs uh, and, and he clicks on it, then that, that it, it wouldn't be checked. And if he presses a space to activate it, it, it also wouldn't be checked. Uh, and the code to do that is basically this thing over here. Let me emphasize it a little bit more. I, I, I'm so sorry. I had to hop off my headphones uh, and I did not hear like, Anything? <laughs> oh, okay, so I, I was talking about the issue that was the the hidden checkboxes. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that this solution so far, uh, I only found it like five seconds. No, maybe a couple of minutes ago. So I, I can fix it later on. <laughs> but the the checkbox, the hidden checkboxes, they are not getting like like, like they don't disappear. But at least at least if you click into them. Or you press, or you press the space bar once you have selected it. Uh, as this case over here, this this one with the blue border, then they wouldn't be checked. So this wouldn't happen. Uh, and the idea is really using this this couple of tricks of code. The first one is to make the this checkbox that they don't return anything once they are clicked. And okay. I'm playing. I'm playing only that to the checkboxes that are hidden, and those are the ones with the class no value. And and then the other one is a uh, taking no sorry uh, taking advantage of the fact that the, this pretty table over here is actually a widget, so it's really our code that it is using some JavaScript library. And if one looks for ways to solve this issue with the actual JavaScript library. That this widget is using, uh, then there are a couple of suggestions of how to do it. And um, one of them is this part over here that we're using the hands on table JavaScript library. And so via this code, we can make sure that uh, before, uh, how, how do you say, before? Key down. Yeah, but be before the, before the effect of pressing the space bar is, right. Is getting activated. We are going to run this code, and it basically checks that if the if the if the key press is if it was a space bar, then don't select this cell. So now that we run those of these lines of code into into the website, and let me reload it again, then it should work. So click on the spacebar, you <laughs> shouldn't be able to activate the, the hidden checkboxes. I am clicking on it and I am um, all right now pressing. So if you select multiples including the space those, oh uh yes. If you press enter, then it does oh, it does okay. but it's only like adding right. This case, That's just a matter of adding, adding. yep. Yeah. So if you select um like Wednesday 7 a.m. and Tuesday 7 a.m. So if you click and drag or whatever, if you drag across multiples like that and then hit space, oops. I space 
no, it isn't selecting anything, but that's only because I have, because this solution, I only figured it out right now. Uh, I am applying the fact that for every checkbox, they don't get selected if the, I press the space button. But over okay. here, I can check if this if this uh, checkbox has a class of no value, then only in that case, don't activate it. So maybe in that case, it will, it will work, but like I will have to, to run the script. Uh, once okay. ends, right? So yeah, the reason for that is like a lot of times I'll just say choose, you know, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. across every weekday and fill, you know, I would like to be able to fill those in and then kind of deselect from there. Um, but obviously I don't want to select the ones that are bad. And uh, I'll sacrifice that <laughs> for if we can make this work, so. Yeah, but I'm pretty confident that the, the solution that you want is possible because, I mean, we only have to check if the checkbox that is getting, let's say, placed on, uh, right. if he has a no value class, and, and then do, don't do unselect it. So I, I, I know there is hope. Okay, that's great. Well, that's very cool. I'm I'm excited. And so, okay. So the idea would be that we add this as custom JavaScript. Yes, uh, in the W W W folder. Okay. Um. And then, trying to think if that would that should be it. We shouldn't have to do any, um, anything on the R side other than adding it as in the uh, you know, which we do other things with so. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, okay, thanks. So, do I guess book clubs always start on the hour? Yes. It's okay. I, it's something I hadn't really like given thought but, to. Before. Yeah, the, the old uh, sign up sheets let people select in like fifteen minute increments. Um, and that just makes them run into each other. And so I have thought about doing like a little bit of a tighter map where we have half hours in between clubs instead of an hour in between clubs. Um, we could do that as we get this more straightened out. Um, but it, I mean, I don't know. Uh, that can be convenient for um, India, especially um, where they're, off by uh, like 10 and a half hours from the US. Um, but uh, I don't know, it hasn't been worth it basically to allow for that. Uh, since going to our custom sign up form, my life's less, you know, I have less headaches. So that's nice. <laughs> Cause every once in a while it would happen that, um, you know, a club runs long and then the next club can't start because we're we only have uh like I, I have a paid account for FRDS, but it only allows for one meeting at a time. Um and so you know that can cause issues. And so that that's what all of that is about. The reason there's the hour buffer is you know, we don't really restrict clubs to an hour, but I'm okay with yelling at people if they've been on the club for two hours. <laughs> you know, like, hey, free up the channel, please. Um, there is a neat software. It's open source. I, I've been trying to get it running on my server for like a few months. I'll try every few hmm. weekends. But it, I don't know if it's worth like trying. I um, think I think there was an issue with recording with it gotcha. that made it not like we. Yeah, I looked into all the things. Yep. And it came down to, you know what, paying for Zoom is easier <laughs> than <laughs> all of these other options. Um, yeah, Google Hangouts uh, have time restrictions if, uh, I think it's like if any of the members aren't paid, something uh, like there's a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, like 40 minutes or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were, yeah, lots of different options. Plus, I have it, I have uh, the Zoom API <laughs> sorted out. And so I don't want to move because I can, we're, we're very close to auto posting the meeting um, 
videos. Um, or, yeah, I mean, they would auto upload, but then we'd have to, I'd still have to edit them because I don't think we will ever fully automate that. Um, I want a human to look at them before we <laughs> post them live. Um, but yeah, so, so yes, I have looked in the, um, that and others before and none of them quite had everything that we needed. Um, I, I don't know, I guess I have a different topic question. Sure. It, it, I'll, I'll use this as uh, John has, <laughs> John knows a lot and I can ask him a lot of good questions. <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember way back when Hadley stopped by, I think it was advanced R I had asked about like jumping in and like starting to contribute and stuff. And I was like, I found problems. Um, I, I have submitted pull requests for these mm. NYC flights problems. And like, they're just kind of sitting there. And I'm like, I don't like, I don't know. Like, I don't really know what to do with them. And then um, I guess the 2022 flights data for just regular NYC flights won't be available until March. Like when, when it's all there, then I guess I submit another pull request and then hope that someone looks at it. Or I, yeah, so I was just reading this yesterday that if you go to, um, oops, ah, I just closed a window I did not want to close. Uh -huh. uh, where did it go? Uh oh, that's good. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to find all my stuff. There it is. All right. Um, if you go to one of their repos, so let's say GitHub.com, probably that one. Is that Tidyverse NYC flights or? Yeah, it's NYC flights 13 is Tidyverse. Okay. Regular NYC flights is some person. I'm not right. quite sure. Oh, he doesn't is. have it here. So in their newer packages, there's a file support.md, um, or at least use this auto creates that. So I assume um, it's in their packages now. Let's see, it does I use this have its own? Pull yes. Pull up like dplyr R and see. So um, I pulled it up and used this, okay. support.md. And they say at the end, um, here, this, I will copy paste. Basically they say, look, we, Oh, that's very long. But the idea is uh, we work on one package at a time. And yeah. so when there's enough, then they will come and look at this. It might be months. So well, um, the thing is like NYC flights 13 is data from 2013. So like there's not really much happening on it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like the, it's just like, I, I know like they're busy and they have a lot of things to do, but it's like, well, like there's never going to be like enough pull requests on MX right. Flex 13. Yeah, I, I noticed that they don't specifically say that on that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's funny because there's a PR from Mine from 21, 2021. Yeah, and um, then my pull request actually like responds to that one. <laughs> like a, a year later and I was like hey, right I, I submitted I, I I was able to find like the right links and update it but yeah I don't know um that one like uh, uh, you might not get a response anytime soon yeah I really don't know um I'm trying to see if they have anything you know, in here about, we will check on this once every two years or something. <laughs> yeah, like the original uh, um, NYC flights, I don't even, I think, yeah, he has some activity from like, October, but it doesn't really look like he's particularly active anymore. Yeah. It's so, like I can submit pull requests there too. And then maybe if someone, some enterprising individual like myself comes along and goes, hey, I wonder why this is out of date. Oh, look, this Gus guy made a made a fork and has some updated stuff. Like 
that works. Right. But so I see like he's not the maintainer, but Simon Couch is involved with NYC flights. He's a little bit more like if you just ping him on Twitter, he might yeah. be able to push it through. I, uh, I would be mortified to ping anyone on Twitter. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> so then the other option is you just mention it and then John says at Simon. Okay. There, um, <laughs> and like part of it is also like I'm not sure I did it whatever I did I'm not sure I did like right and I know that it's a judgment free zone but that doesn't mean that I will inflict judgment on myself right uh, <laughs> fair enough well it's so this is something I noticed in my um you're familiar with vetiver yes do you are you familiar with who's developing it at posit uh is it still Julia or did it's did someone else I don't know if Julia is still doing it but Isabel Zimmerman and I oh. went to college, we, we went to college together so like, okay when when we were in class we would learn about like oh like Hadley Wickham is big in R and then like we did our data mining class and it was like Julia Silge is really like she did like tidy text and then Isabel gets a job at Posit and it's like wait these are real people <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just sort of like it's like intimidating I guess to feel like these are real people that like you learn about in school and then like <laughs> open source you're now interacting with them and it's like if you're a physicist and like you randomly like were able to work on a project with Isaac Newton you'd be like holy cow like this is crazy and just like but anyways <laughs> well let's see uh -oh. Uh, I, I just almost. checked it, set a calendar in uh, event for myself to check on the yearly data in January, but it looks like on the uh, Bureau of Transportation, uh, they have an announcement that data will be available in March for December. Okay. So the All regular right. flights won't be updated to 2022 until March or so. Oh, there we go though. So hopefully, uh, here. Um, and so, okay. So yeah, I pinged Simon. We'll see if anything happens. Um, Lucio asked in chat, I forgot to ask, was the read-only property used for the R data frame from which our hands-on table constructs the HTML table? Uh, I, I, I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, was the read-only property? Uh, Uh, no, if you set it to read only, you can't change the selection. And so, no, it's not set to that. Like, if you look at that example there, if you click on the cells, you can't select them or deselect them. That's just for display. Um, but just say, okay, individual columns, rows. Right. So it's. Um, 
it does say that you can I, I, there was a bug i can't remember because you can set individual cells to read only but i can't remember why i swear that didn't work but looking at it now it seems like it should um that we can do the hot cell read only equals true um so it might be as is it that simple? I don't know. Let's see. Um, let me reload this. I think I think this might have a problem, but it, it's still I think it still failed for the multi-select case. If you just click and drag. Um, let's see. Oh no! I mean, it's still that seems to work. Um. I don't remember. Maybe it, it might have um, not been, or I might not have been able to figure out how to uh, make it hide and be read only. Because if it's read only, but you don't tell people that they can't change it, it's just confusing. Like even looking at the example here, like I click on the box and nothing happens, but it doesn't tell me why nothing is happening. So, um, I can't remember, uh, but that's worth looking into. So I guess another just kind of random, random talking point or random thing to talk about is the thing I've been doing lately quite a bit of is taking some code that I, you know, want to clean up or I've got like an idea for an R package and uh, using ChatGPT as my like coding buddy. It's not like it's often wrong, but it's still helpful. <laughs> um, and I've been working on this package for, um, so, okay. The next ma major uh, Shiny app I want to make is for submitting data sets for Tidy Tuesday. Right now you can do that through GitHub. We even did a little bit of experimentation with setting up templates, but we still just, um, the info we get is, hey, it would be neat if you go look at, you know, go find some data about this or different, you know, like some of the issues are, are not very helpful. <laughs> um, and so we want to set up a, a an app where people can come and submit data sets and we would credit them in the posts and you know make it but like make it uh have some validation on what gets submitted that please actually include all the info we need in order to use the data set um and part of that is i want to collect social media uh contact info about this person who is submitting something and i thought huh that should just be a module that you can just load on any Shiny app where you select which social media sites out of the ones that we have set up and it'll uh, allow you to collect the data and um, like validate. So, or not just validate, normalize that if they submit to their Twitter handle as, you know, at John the Geek or twitter.com slash John the Geek or um, just John the Geek, all of those get normalized to be the same format, whichever, you know, whatever format you ask it to be. Um, and so I started working on that and I'm not, it's not a thing quite yet. Um, yesterday at the uh, Use This book club, the the one where we're reading the Use This docs, I made it a package, um, but I haven't actually made it actually work yet. But that's one I've been kind of working with <laughs> chat GPT of, no, I don't like how that one looks. Can we, you know, what could we do to change this layout? I haven't actually been successful yet, but I've made it like it it works. It just doesn't work super well yet. Um, I, so I, I saw your message about like, is there a way to normalize these input fields? And it reminded me of the many articles about like why trying to parse valid email addresses is not yes. Yes. Okay. I just <laughs> absolutely. It's not going to be perfect, and yeah. you know, 
I, I won't say that it is, but I can do it. Uh, we've got some uh, some some regex that does pretty well to standardize now. And and yeah, what I will almost certainly do is standardize it down to just the username, and then expand it back out to so you can say I want the version with the URL, I want the version without you know with an at, or I want the version that's just the username. Um. But right now, like, so I, I don't know, I think that general idea is working or know, it's kind of working. So one thing I want to do, like, I don't know if you saw my question in the Shiny channel, is that ideally I want to run it after they're done typing because, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of times it'll probably be copy paste, but if it's not a copy paste situation, it would be it, ideally I want to send it back and update the field where they just entered it. But if I update the field where they entered it while they're typing it, that is a very or unpleasant experience. And yes, Tan recommended debounce, which just makes you wait until um, like after a chain or it, it, if, if it changes more than once, um, it, it pauses the, uh, the um, reactivity. But it's that still like, I think that's another thing that I wanna just do is set up a thing where on the browser, add some JavaScript that is a um, basically detecting uh, what cell is focused. And then that would allow you and send that to the shiny input object um, as, you know, has focus or something. And so you could set, you could have an observe event in Shiny when that has focus input object changes to run something. Um, and so yeah, have it depend on it, that the has focus changing would be kind of like if there was a button press. Um, so actually I think talking that out was useful. That doesn't sound that hard to do. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then you could do things like only uh, only when this uh, when you know when the Twitter input loses focus, then run this code that normalizes the Twitter input, but don't do it while the Twitter input has focus. Um, that would also work. Like I'd have to work on the timing, but if you clicked a submit button, the wherever they were typing would lose focus. And so it should run that before the submit button actually triggers. That sounds a lot like um, like social media platforms when you like go to sign up and it's like, choose your username and then you type it in and then it will wait for you to finish typing and then say, oh, that's not available. Right. Available. So like, I don't know if you're, if you like popped open like Reddit or something and just peeked at the, using like inspect element and peek to see what they're doing, if it's yeah, available. That is an interesting idea. Um, so if I say, uh, I'm in login, not sign up. That's why. Come on. Sign up. Yes. So that did a little pause and then it did. Insert uh, validation. Yes. Anyway, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I'll have to look into what is this doing. So that's got to be JavaScript. That one, hmm. Because it does wait for me to pause. I wonder. Huh. How does it decide that I am done typing? Is it just a pause after typing events?
I will definitely look into that. And then the idea would be um, <laughs> probably as another separate package that just has this one little widget of, hey, do you want to be able to have your Shiny app um, you know, respond to whether they're done typing, then use this. Um, probably like one function, maybe two, because it might have a like a built-in observe event that has all the stuff set up right, something like that. Um, it's really funny. Like, I I don't know. I, I haven't outside of R4DS, I haven't made an, a shiny app in a very long time. I started at work doing uh, shiny apps. That was like one of the first things I did with R. Um, and I don't know, like a lot of times shiny apps, at least in my experience, don't actually get used. Um, and so it was very aggravating to work on them, but I actually really like <laughs> shiny programming. It's like, it's interesting. It's very weird with all the reactivity stuff. Um, and it can be really frustrating sometimes because of like wrapping your head around, wait, okay, I'm coding for like around states and and the fact that this thing might change and how do i make it uh you know how do i deal with that so one of the first dashboards i had i had um like two tabs that uh there were different types of filters that kind of depended on one another and so i had to do this whole thing of um not updating one while the other one was being up the same sort of thing basically because it, you would get loops where Oh, that one changed. So this changes. Oh, that changed. So this changed. And so it would, um, they'd go, it would, the dashboard would go crazy basically until I had it sorted out of, okay, no, effectively the same sort of thing. Of, don't change this, the second one until the first one is done. <laughs> um, the next step would be have a whole bunch of these little shiny tools and then make like the John verse of <laughs> shiny tools. Maybe. Uh, maybe, uh, I still, so yeah, I have, um, the cookies package that's on CRAN. I have scenes now on CRAN, which is, um, what I use in shiny Slack to let you have, if they're logged in, it just shows the app. If they're not logged in, it shows the login screen, or if it's, if they have the code that they're in the middle of the login process, it, it the UI processes that code basically, or well, really the server does, but. Actually, eh, whatever, the, the Shiny server processes that code. Um, that, that, so, you know, yeah, I do have a couple of Shiny packages on CRAN now. Um, and cookies, like, that one was just, oh, come on, why does this not already exist? Um, there was a, there is a GitHub repo from someone at our studio, I can't remember, but it uh, was never finished. And it was never like, um, I submitted a PR a year ago or something and nothing ever happened. So I was like, okay, I guess I will do my own version. Um, all right, well, with all that, uh, I think that is all I've got. Uh, this turned out to be super useful because yes, exactly this Reddit thing is going to be the answer. I think of what I want. So um, it might even give me some things idea. to search for. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Uh, this is like, it works how I want this thing to work. And it's within awesome. the field. It's, well, okay, it doesn't actually change what you have entered. So I still need to make sure that I don't cause a cascade of, you know, uh, revalidation or something. Um, but the idea is once you have cleared it out, I want to actually like just update what you have entered to be the format that I want. And I've seen that on forms for sure One. too, like phone numbers or dates that will stand normalize after you leave the field. Yes. Are you saying like you would normalize it in the text field itself or just yes. display? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. A little risky. Yeah. <laughs> um. Because part of the the reason is sometimes I know I have had things like, oh, did they want the at there or the way that's worded, it's not clear. And I'll just, you know, show them like, this is what I wanted. Thanks. You were close enough. <laughs> you know, there's, 
there's also the method of just like you have like a little thing beneath the text box that says that shows yeah yeah or you can like easily built it into shiny you can show um there's a placeholder that you can put so i i would also encourage that but still whatever i, I kind of like like for example the mastodon one that there are you can do the url of yourself or you can do yourself at server and both of those have all the information and are easy to copy and paste so I, I don't, whichever one you planned to do i'm fine with uh whichever one you have on your clipboard or in your fingers that you type really quickly um but i need one or the other <laughs> like it needs to I have all the information you can at least consult the individual websites it's like if you just open like someone's mastodon server and try typing in usernames and see when it yells at you right you have good criteria for what to do yeah mastodon is definitely going to be the most complex one because usernames for mastodon are complex you need to know about the server and the handle um but detecting whether i have an actual you know the server could be anything anything that's kind of url e um because nowadays you know it's you can't i'm sure there are ways to validate is this i mean hitting the internet is one way to validate is this an actual url but you know like mastodon.social oh yeah dot social is a, a valid tld and there's a million other ones now so it's hard to tell anyway um That so yeah, this is really cool. This has this uh, input um, animated form text input and M modal update. Interesting. <laughs> I'll have to dig into these styles. It looks like so they have classes, and I'm sure there's some JavaScript that happens based on the class. Let's see what's going on. So I will dig into that and see what I can see. Um, and probably look at the network while I uh, and see what gets triggered. I think Google does the same thing when creating new email addresses, but it's been a very long time since I've made an email address. Yeah. yeah I guess oh, okay. So on the phone. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to know what is being triggered, what JavaScript is triggered when I type. Um, because it's already loaded. I, I'll probably just have to go through the code and see. But still, very cool. I can do a yeah, no, recording that might tell me. Oh no. Okay. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> I'll figure this out. Um yeah, interesting. Okay. Uh and next month, um probably Gus will talk, but maybe Lydia. And uh I will see everyone then. Sounds good. Thanks so much. All right. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs>